totally awesome fishing show. The fastest growing fishing show on YouTube. Now, here at TA, we don't do tackle ramming, but there comes a time when even I need to talk to an expert. And down at Eastbourne in Sussex is one Tony Kerridge, probably the most famous beach match angler in Britain. He has been a pioneer of many new tackle rigs. So, off I go down to Eastbourne for an exclusive interview with the man himself and we get the lowdown on the latest outfit to hit the British beach scene. In his tackle shop, you can get all you need to set yourself up for shore fishing. Well, I'm here in Tony's tackle shop down in Eastbourne, and it's not just beat fishing now. I mean, Tony's got this whole revolutionary casting for beginners, I'm gonna call it, whereby you guys out there that are in the beginners range can cast miles and hopefully get a few more fish. Tony, what's it all about? Well, the basic thing, Graham, it's a new concept in angling, and uh, I'm finding I'm getting a lot of people in the shop, and uh, it's been going on for about the last year in Eastbourne, and what basically happens is you, you buy a longer rod now, um, probably about 15 foot, if not 16, and they're very progressive action and they're very easy to cast. And what, what happens is you get a fixed ball reel, which is something like this. Um, it doesn't cost a huge amount of money, and the, the basic setup comes to about, it came to start about 70 pounds, but everyone will always use the multiplier. Now all of a sudden they're all using these fixed balls with 10 pound fire line on them, which is braid. Yeah. And they're just casting miles, it's phenomenal. And I'm finding that I spent sort of 15 years learning the, Technique, the, the techniques of match fishing and spent a lot of time doing it. Now all of a sudden these guys are coming out of the woodwork, they've just bought a rod and reel, 150 pounds, can go up to four or 500, but yeah. basically they're finding it so easy to cast and all the hard work I've done on the field and all this over the years, and these guys, you look round and they're five yards behind you. Really? Yeah, it's just right. phenomenal, really. So, I mean, so tell me about the blank. Let's, let's see what about this blank, um, you know? This is just a, a what's called a Power Stick Pro. This is a pen one. This a is pen. an average ballpark rod to come into the game with. Yeah. Um, it's 15 foot, three piece, very easy to cut, transport in your car. You can put it in the boot. You haven't got all great big sort of bits sticking out of your car and yeah. across the... Because years side. ago, I can remember, it used to be all the thing. I used to have a... Uh, some of the Conaflex ones had a, had, a, had a base pole and they're like asymmetric, you call yeah, it like yeah. an eight you foot have, tip. Yeah, you all the zip lexes, oh, no, yeah. ones Couldn't that got take all it eight foot tips. That's it, nightmare. I in the car and everything. Well, this is Three basically feet. simple. You know, it goes in the car, you can put it in the boot if you want, near enough. Um, you get yourself a fixed ball, but it must be a long cone fixed ball, similar to this one. Yeah. And basically, the longer the cone on here, the further it will cast. Oh, really? So if you, you'll notice straight away a cheap fixed ball will have a very short cone. And as they get longer in the cone on here, you'll find they get a bit, little bit more expensive. I mean, this one, particularly, this is a ISO, ISO, Bayesian type reel yeah. from Daiwa. I mean, you're looking at four or five hundred pounds. This is my son's. But basically, you can get a reel round about like this, a copy or whatever, for around about 40 pounds, and you'll find yourself doing phenomenal distances straight away, you know. Now, Tony, when you, when you talk about this distance here, I suppose they could make the mistake of buying a cheap reel, but you need to make sure it's got an even line laid, don't you, you know? Yeah, when, when you, with the when gear you, the, again, the oscillation system on That's a Shimano it. or something like that would be far greater than the average reel. But now, in, in this world nowadays, they copy everything, I'm afraid, you know? Yeah. And some of this stuff now, you can buy a, a copy of a Shimano reel, not the same, not, not same quality, copy, but it may have all the concept of a of yes. a reel that's um, you know two three hundred pounds for about forty nine pounds. What would you do on the line? Because that must take phenomenal. Is that a shallow spool? What they put on, you get you get two spools with these reels. You get a shallow one for braid and a, yeah. and a deeper one for um, nylon. And you'll find if you put on this ten pound fire line, which a lot of the lads use, it's so thin. It's like casting down a river with about four pound line. So it just it comes off there. Sometimes you'll cast it, I've done it myself, and you'll feel like you haven't actually cast the rod. You feel like it's cracked off. Really, because there's and nothing, there's no drag. You don't see it in the water. It just comes off so um, neatly and so quietly, you actually think, I might have cracked off here, but it actually hits the water and obviously it goes a lot of distance, you know. And what, but, about, um, what about stuff like the, the actual fittings on the rod, the rings and stuff? Is there any difference in those? Yeah, on most of these rods, you, you've got um, these rings that are called low riders. 
big difference now, Graham, is you've got these rings called low riders, and they're very small, and you know you can't believe it because years ago, if you had a fixed ball rod, a fixed ball reel, sorry, you you have to use a ring similar to this, which is huge, and it takes a lot of action out the rods. It makes them a lot lot softer. You know, so it, it basically ruins the action of some of the blanks. Yeah, because years ago, With didn't the, they used to say this This used to cone it down, but we were saying yeah, you don't need that now. You, you, you literally don't need these huge rings anymore. You can you can deal with these small low riders, which are fantastic. And it's uh, they tested it all in Japan and everything. And, and the way it works, I think they're slightly pointed forward, and, and the line just fires through them. And, and you, so it enables you to use one of these reels, rods and you can use a multiplier or a fixed ball. Now, I'm just no I'm just looking at it from the other side of the camera now. I see these light arms here. Does that help when it's coiling to shut that down to go through there, do you think? Uh, I, if I was to be totally honest, I'm not going to say yeah because I'm not 100%, yeah. but I know that they've tested these, and I think it's the way they're set off the rod that the, the line just fires through, and it, it definitely doesn't slow it down. The only thing you do get a little bit is that when... A lot of the lads here with this rod, this is a 500 pound rod, a Gravel, and what they've done is that a few of the lads have changed the last two rings here because you find like, you know, years ago you get weed clearance and you find that everything gets shut in there and it's messy if you're match fishing. So they make these two rings a little bit bigger and a tip ring a bit bigger just for weed clearance. Yes. And obviously sometimes you get your shot leader knocks. It's so thin. Yeah, jams in the tip. Almost like a carp rod. So it's so thin that you basically get your... Your, your shot are not jammed in there, so they all just change the last two rings. Now, just out of interest, I guess a tournament guys have had a go at this. What would you cast with the lead on the field, just so people know the distances could be achieved? I think there's a, there's a, there's a. Obviously, I think you'd cast up to 250, but I think really? there's, a, I think there's a great, there's a great leveler with it where this will cast a long way, yes. and then you come to a stop. Yeah. You know, a real long way, yeah. but you will actually come to a stop where it won't go any further. You with me? So it's the instant angler, but yeah. if he was to progress again, he might want to buy a Ziplex yes. and basically a multiplier and go for the go for broke and learn. Yeah. Now these but won't cast with a multiplier, or you can use a they'll multiplier. They'll cast really well with a multiplier. They'll cast with fixed ball, um, anything. Do they? And they're do very they, versatile, you know. Do they cast with braid on a multiplier? I've never done that. No, braid it's on all a multiplier. Mono. I did know a guy, Dave Kite. He's passed away now. He used to fish here, and he used to fish with a multiplier with braid and quite successfully but basically um, no one really uses braid on a multiplier it's all it's dangerous fixed ball, yeah <laughs> but one thing I have noticed I've watched the lads we had a peer competition the other week and with this braid the other thing that's good for the angler I suppose when you get a bite obviously you know braid doesn't yep. stretch so when you actually get a bite the rod nearly comes off the rod. I mean I, f I was fishing next to a guy the other day and I thought he had a 10 pound cod because the rod's oh, really? gone flying off the rod rest yeah. And, and he, you have to kind of, in the matches, ignore it because you have to fish almost by the clock, you know, yeah. 10, 15 minutes at a time and reel yeah. in. Because what happens is it shoots off the rod rest, it's going mental, and it might be sort of like a, I don't know, half a pound white. Oh, really? You know, yeah, no, no stretching in the, in no the braid. No stretching the braid, just like in the bow. It's yeah. huge bites. But there is an advantage to that when you get used to it. You know you've had a bite, whereas with nylon, sometimes you'll cast out a long way, yeah. and you've got a bit of tide there and everything, and you won't even see a bite. You know, you just really, in, I, I fish mainly uh, 11 minutes, or depending on the what kind the conditions are and how fast they're fishing, I tend to reel in every 11 minutes. So because you don't all, always see the bites, you can reel in. So what you're saying is, possibly leave the bite a little bit longer if you're a beginner, just let it progress a bit, oh, let the fish you, get you, on. If you was to cast out with this, with braid, you'd be up there running about, striking, <laughs> God knows what. I'm missing you, don't, you don't need to do it, just let it, you know, because you're going to get, the bite you're going to get on here, it's going to be enhanced double. It's really? Gonna, it's got, even a small fish is going to whack it because there's no stretch at all and it's very direct and as soon as you get any type of bite that tip's going to go mad and of course as you can see here the tip's very sensitive as well yeah you know it's very this is almost like a carp rod what leads they're going to throw tony what's what uh, lead? Throw, up, throw up to sort of like six ounce no problem um, i know people have put eights on them before but i wouldn't really you know i mean they you've, you've only got to look at it to be honest but what they'll do, they'll come in here and they'll buy a five and a quarter impact lead. What's that? What's an impact um, lead? I'll show you one. Hang on. Yeah, this Graham is the impact lead, which is by far the most popular lead of all now. Most people use an impact lead. It enables you to clip with these 
modern rigs, which you can buy made up now, fantastic, off the wall now. I used to spend hours making these. Um, basically, it all clips down onto the lead. Look, you've got three hooks on here. I don't know if you can see them all, but I'm going to put them near the camera so you can. And what actually happens is the impact lead works. It's all worked fantastic. Nigel Forrest designed it from Breakaway. And it, when the lead hits the water, the pressure of the water will push this yellow top. And in, in another context, the, the, um, the red tops are six ounce. These are five and a quarter. So they're graded, colour yeah, coded. Color -coded. They're colour coded. You've got the blue of the four ounce. So. And as it hits the water, the pressure of the water pushes this, um, this shield, and that will ping it off. Oh, I see. And they all come off, and they never... Years ago, people used to cast out with bait clips, and they, and they used to come off. They, you know, they they hit the water, and they wouldn't come off. Yes, I've had that. And people yeah. never yeah. told you, yeah. and they really in, and it's still on. That's the, it. It's still the clip. Still clipped up. But yeah. even if you did a very poor cast, this will come off every time. And you can see just how yeah. the tone's holding tight. You these can rigs see, now. I mean, uh, there's your traces just hanging down. Yeah. So that's a three hook one. Now, what's the significance of these little? Right, what these sequins, sequins on here sequins. and the bait stops, they're ma magic they are. When you get your lug, you'll find that you'll get your lug worm and you'll put it on the hook and it'll end up up here. You know, it yeah, can it end up, up right up there. So basically when these fish come in, they charge in like this whack because they're just feeding in a frenzy. And basically they miss the hook, you miss the fish, everything goes up in the air and you miss it's your gone. bites. With, with these stops on here and, and the sequin, you can put your lug on and then you can bring the stop down so you can condense all your lug worm right into this hook piece, you know, and maybe just a little bit above. Yeah. Of course, you can condense everything into there. So as soon as you get a bite, yeah. you're going to hook it. It's taking that, I mean, yeah. you're going to miss the odd bite, obviously. It's like blowing up the line. Yeah, you blow but up you the don't line. need no, lug worm up here. It's a joke. Yeah. So once you put it on, you can put a fairly big lug worm on yeah. or whatever bait you've got and you Slide can push that down, it right yeah. down so it's all condensed. So you end up with all three baits nicely compact into an now area. Now what is that, just to be old up there, Tony, this bit, is that just a, a ledger stop thing or something? That little that's orange bit? That's just a small rubber band yeah. that's gone in and out twice just to make this little stop, that's all. It's just a little um, float cap type thing, you with me? I've got you, yeah. Of course yeah. it does the job and it's perfect. And what trace here, what's the sort of... This is Amnesia 20 pound. Yeah, and hooks? Uh, and you've got Camasam. B940s in general, that's the general hook. Is that like a 1.0 or 2.0? Um, about a size 2, not yeah. a 2 oh, about a 2. A lot of people, again, they'll, they'll go fishing and they use hooks far too big. Yeah. You'll find that if you've got a small hook, because we match fish all the time, yeah. you will actually, if you've got an 8 pound cod on that, there's no reason you should lose it if you're not stupid. So they're quite a strong wire then? Yeah, they're pretty strong. Um, you know, obviously you play the odds, but you know, I've found that it doesn't really, you get these great big hooks and big baits and they work in certain areas, maybe Dungeness, but in general, fishing, you'll pick up, most of my codling I catch are on just match rigs. Now that one, you've got just to show them that bottom rig, if I just hold that. Yeah, this is what's called a Portsmouth dropper. That's fixed, isn't it? Let's get it right in the camera, so yeah. where is it, that one? If I hold them like that, you can just, your just explain dropper. how you've got that. That's fixed if you hold them. Yeah, there. this this one here, you'll find that it doesn't. Um, and it's on a separate I find clip that if, there. It, if it's really rough, if it's a rough day, I'll use two up and one down, which is this Portsmouth dropper. If it's not rough, if it's rough, I tend to use three hooks above the line because you tend to find this bottom one gets tangled in the yes. rough weather. Yeah, and I don't over. think it works quite as effectively no. as, as what it would when basically you're, you're fishing um, you know, in, in rough weather, free above the weight seems to less, you get less tangled basically. You know? and, and this one here? This what? is a 60 pound grease weasel. So that and, basically... and a lot of the anglers use the grey, it's very supple. Yeah. You know, you find a great, believe it or not, it's got different texture a lot of this line, it's a different colour, different texture completely. Some people use clear, but I think the grey is very nice. It ties better. Yeah. Uh, the guy who ties all our rigs he tells me that this ties so well, the knots. Oh, I see. It, it pulls up lovely. So and these you, you'll these use the, the grease weasel clear, and it, it won't tie as nice, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it's just, just different, small little things. And um, on the subject of that, from the reel, obviously guys are fishing. What sort of braid? What braid are they going to spool up with on these, on these fixed balls? Oh, they'll be using... Uh, Probably ten pound fire line. Some of the guys who come in, um, I give them um, this um, 
I've got another braid that I do, which is quite nice, yeah. and I give them twenty pound to just give them a, you know, if they straight on ten pounds, a bit harsh, you know, when they're beginners. I normally put twenty five pound braid on there, perhaps something like um, thirty pound whiplash is not yeah. wrong because it's so thin, you know, that yeah. anything that's a little bit um, that's going to work from and not quite getting so much of a mess you'll find the 10 pound it's more the guy who's been doing it a while you and me what about so, you what, what, what about your actual shock leader we're going to use that 60 pound they use tapered weasel? leader on it that's very important oh, on these tapered. fixed balls they use tapered leader you'll find these tapered leaders graham they're they're brilliant for sort of like um using on a fixed ball I, i'm not over keen on multiply i use sort of like 60 pound weasel or 60 pound c match but but you'll find with these taper ones they're great on a fixed ball but i'm I don't, i'm not enamored on the beach but they're okay some people use them it's a choice thing you know what i mean they do a job yeah they'll do the job but they, they have the advantages on things like on a pier because if you're on a pier you don't want a big knot again you know you just want it to flow out nicely and you haven't got to cast quite so far on a pier yeah. so it's a great thing because sometimes you'll get on a pier and you'll get to your leader knot and it'll trap in your top ring. Yeah. And that's the last thing you want, you know, whereas fish if you've got a tapered off. leader, in it comes smoothly and you're yeah. in, you unclip, you get your next free fish. I've got you. Um, that's now, another thing with What are those them, two you got there, Tony, in your hand? The, 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 these uh, are ESP. Um, what is that? Uh, Peter Drennan makes these, they're just tapered leaders, the same as the divers. Just not on the come, spool, you, you buy them a little skein yeah, like that. Yeah, they come in a pack of three, and they're almost like this, but you've got clear ones, is, yeah. okay? Yeah. And then you've got, um, these ones, which some people use for carp, yes. they're, they're sort of green, you and me. Yeah. Right, this is my own real gram, as you can see, fishing on the pier last week, and I've cracked off, so I've obviously lost a shot leader. <laughs> um, but um, in general, I don't normally get bird's nests, but unfortunately when you're on a pier, you have to overhead cast, so sometimes the, the lead will travel a bit slower, and obviously sometimes you get a sort of bird's nest, but anyway, um, Getting onto the line I use on here, I always use, I tend to use this F1. See, I don't know if you can see it on there, it's black. Um, what makes that then, Tony? Who, who makes it? But it's one of the best, this is ultimate, it's one of the best lines I've found, uh, the F1. Now, we went to Gambia and they supplied us with some in black and some in um, this other colour, which is titanium. But what we found is that Everyone said that it would, what they call white line, the black, with the heat, you and me. Yes. But when we got over there, this, for some reason, this black F1 is 10 times better than the titanium. Is that right, it's really? Like why, I don't know. I mean, but I, I, all my friends, we all use it. We all use F1 black. Yeah. None of us use the titanium. It just hasn't got the same context. It's amazing. Whether the dye affects it. Oh, we or, see the colouring in it, I just it, yeah. don't know, but definitely, one of the best lines you can buy is F1. It's not cheap, it sells at around 14 pounds, 12, 12 95 for a bulk spool. What sort of bulk spool you've there, got Tony? about, on average on a bulk spool, you've got about a thousand meters. Oh, okay. So yeah, there's plenty of it, you get, yeah. you get four load ups out of a reel. Yeah. But uh, in general, we've definitely found that the black is a, is a much better texture context gotcha. than the than the titanium and you, although the titanium's okay you know but it's just not as good and you do you do price. your own make as well though don't you tony as well as yeah, that, you know you can line, tony's tackle c match which is very popular um we've always sold this and it's been a huge seller for us the c match and one good thing about the c match it's reliable it's cheap and yeah. it doesn't go wrong it does what it says on the tin really that's you know good I mean? that's what you want so it's very good stuff Another line that's very, very good, and people underestimate it's very good if you want to save yourself money, and it's called Diver Sensor. Yes. You probably come across it in carping. Marvellous stuff. Yeah. The black sensor. And again, people swear by the black, the darker colour. I'm not sure if it's black or brown. Yeah. Uh, brown, I think, sorry. But they don't like the um, clear so much, yeah. whereas you'd think clear would be the answer. Would have thought so, I yeah, would have thought so, yeah. I don't know what it is, it's something to do with the dyes, I'm not sure, but the the, the sense of brown, 12 pound, it's marvellous good stuff. for sea fishing, only costs you around 7 99 a spool, Yeah. not costing you 15 quid like F1, Yeah. so if you're the average guy, we'll, we'll probably sell them the sensor, you with me? Yeah. And, and great, if you get a carp angler, I mean, you know how strong it is. It's marvellous stuff, you know. Yeah. And it, it's not overpriced, you know. Uh, what do you put the traces on, Tony? Yeah, what, what's, there's a big change in... It used to be all rig wallets, yeah, didn't it, years ago? change. And as you can see, there's a conventional rig wallet under here, which obviously 
many years ago, I don't know if it's still got it on it, but I designed these, and if we can get to it quickly, I'll show you. No, that's his own one, sorry, but they normally got Tony's tackle on because I did thousands of them. You know oh, really? I mean? used to market yeah. those, yeah. But what's, there's a huge change here because a guy from Tronics, which is a company, people started making rigs and putting them on these winders. I'll show you a winder quickly. Are they adapted from something else or they're made for the tackle no, trade? they're just made for the tackle trade. Yeah. And, and they started putting them on these winders because they're nice and neat. Are they hard, soft? Yeah, they're, they're hard they're ones. They're quite yeah. hard. They work yeah. out, they're only about 40 pence each, 30 pence to buy, 40 pence. Yeah. Um, but what people do, they'll buy a, a box now. This is the latest one from Leader. Um, beautiful. It sells at around 14.99. You've got... Um, 24, um, 24 different spools, different spools, and colour code is for your traces as well. It again, um, and you've got little gaps here to put a bit of tackle in the front. Yes. So it's quite nice to go in your in your Shakespeare box or your, your Nova box straight in on the top or yeah. wherever, and it's done. And you get out your rig wallet straight away. But as I say, many many years ago, everybody had a rig wallet. Yeah. Now everyone's got either one of these. This was the original one from Tronics, which is very popular. It holds 20 made-up rigs. Um, it's very, very cheap. It's only around 6 99 Crikey, yeah. So it's a rig yeah. storage box, as you can see. Yeah, good idea, yeah. And the good thing is, when you get them in there, you can put them all exactly where you want them. You can actually, I actually, on my own ones, which I haven't got here, I actually put a small piece of white card on there, yes. and I'll actually put free up clips or oh, I see, uh, Portsmouth yeah. drop. I, I actually label them with what they are. So obviously, if I'm in a match, and I quickly want to get one. Yeah. I want to know what it is and how quick I can get it on. I don't yeah. want to be faffing about for ages thinking. So this has come from the match scene, and really, yeah. the, the speed, the speed of changing yeah, rigs and stuff. It keeps everything, you know, as you put it on, it keeps all the line nice and tight as you put them on there. And when you finish fishing, if you're, unfortunately, I'm not. I, as soon as I finish fishing, I come in here and I sell my rigs. The yeah. next day. I never use a rig twice, oh, and really? I sell them half price. Yeah. But but guys who are, you know, obviously conserving money and being careful yeah. that they'll actually take them home and if you clean all this off get all the seawater off it yeah and you'll probably have to use a rig at least five or six times if not more really if you just keep an eye on it make sure that the reason i never use a rig twice is because i think sometimes on the stones this barb might get a little nick on it you yes. won't notice and i can't afford to lose fish when you're fishing for money obviously yeah i know what you're saying I just, no, are those hooks are very very sharp because I've only laid it down and I've nicked it in a tripod three times, so it yeah, definitely. No, I know you're saying it could pick on a stone. So shot, uh, you know, and, and just blunt it, blunt good. it. One one thing I will show you that's a thing I do, which is very. A lot of people don't do this, and here's a tip that I've learned over the years, and it's a very simple tip, but a lot of people don't do it. Um, I'll get my conventional hook. This is a B940 Camasan. I believe you can see that there. Yeah. And what I'll do is I'll just get my pliers and you. You tend to, I, I can, by doing this, I can use, when I use a size two hook, I can then use a size one, which is a stronger wire. So if you get a big cod, it's a stronger hook. And I'll push it in like that. I don't know if you can yes, see. It, just and it makes the hook smaller, okay? But that there is not right, okay? Yeah. So I'll push it into there. And then once again on the pliers, if you just twist it and offset it, and that's the finished, I don't know if you can see that. The finished article is that it's offset. Yes, and, and closed in. If you in put a that bit. across your, your the, the back of your hand, you'll find if it's flat, you'll miss. Yes. But you put it across the back of your hand when it's offset, and it gets you every time. Yeah, and I know for a fact this is a you know a lot of people don't do this, they don't think about it, but it's just a little offset on the hook. It makes it smaller, so if you do yeah. a dab or something, you'll get it. Yeah. But it also, you can use a bigger hook, stronger wire, stronger wire, and if you hook a big cod, you should you got a chance of getting it in. But it's just a simple thing like that, offsetting your hooks. Yeah. It makes a huge difference. And uh, a lot of people don't do it. It's just a little match tip, you know. Yeah, another good, um, it's a good one, that is. A handy tip. I take a lot of pride in my bait now. Um, I've almost gone back to when I started 40 years ago. I'd, I'd sort of wrap all the bait with people's name on it. We've got a great bait trade. And we get these black lug. And there's not many places you can buy black lug. Um, Dungeness, obviously, um, on the south coast here. Uh, there's a few black lug up, up around Blackpool and Real, but most places you buy blow lug. The great thing about a black lug is, is when you actually buy it, it's all wrapped and gutted, so yeah. it's all ready to go. And it's, this is a simple thing that some people just don't know. Just before you're going to use that lug worm, yeah. if they're really just been dug, they'll do it theirself. 
But basically, people say, oh, that lug's a bit sloppy. Yeah. If you actually, I don't know if you're going to catch this on camera, if you yeah. actually bang it down, they will actually stiffen right up to put on the hook. Yeah, you see, see it that? tighten, see it tighten yeah. up. Yeah, and uh, then you see how solid that is now, and you can just thread it on the hook, yeah. beautiful bit of bait. You can cut, you can have half of it if you want. Yes. But um, what you mustn't up. do is, I remember my father used to work in here, and he used to bring the bait to the counter and smash it on the oh, counter. No. Of course, in 20 minutes, that's going to be no good. Yeah. So you actually do it on the beach just before you're going to hook. put the lug worm onto the hook. Just show us that one there again, yeah, Tony. Yeah, there's two or three ways just of... Just there. Yeah, I'll just throw it down again. Are you ready? Yeah, you'll see it. Oh, you can see it tighten. He's a smoker as well. Yeah, you can see it tighten up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is. And basically, yeah. you know, ready that, to is go. A, that is a... Great bit of bait, you know, you bait, can nip yeah. that in half if you want, you know, it's perfect. And that will catch you anything. I mean, someone said to me the other day in the pub, I think it was Trevor Rooney, and he said, if you had one bait, what do you have? And I turned around and I said, crab. <laughs> and then when I really thought about it, there's no better bait around here than lugworm. It'll yeah. catch anything. You know, crab's a great bait, but it's a specialist bait. You and me. Now, how is This it? will catch fish anywhere. They, they catch fish up at Norfolk. On that on same bait? And they've never been... Dug they don't hair. even dig them there, or they don't catch them. They don't how, get them. They how get would you keep those? You, so you've got them in paper, how long would, it, would they keep I'd for keep in, them, in a fridge I'd for the guy? I take great pride in them now, and what I do is I keep them, I stand them up in 50s, and I'll wrap them. What I do find is if you keep them closed, if you keep the air out of them, yes. and you keep them closed, you stand them up like that in the fridge. Yeah, anyway. They'll keep really well, and they'll keep for up to a week. Yeah. And another thing that's been happening in match fishing, which is amazing, and it's been happening locally, um, we always strive to get the freshest bait, as you know. A lot of these guys, they'll dig their lugworm three days before a competition, and they'll stand them in the fridge, and they're having great success with three and four day old lug. Oh, really? And, and it, I just can't believe it, because, you know, you used to fresh all the time. You the freshest you can, yeah. and they're all catching on old lug. And they'll keep and how long? In the, if, they, if, they buy, if I buy the worms off of you, can they keep them? Obviously, they'll two keep, or three days? They'll keep five days. So if they've got any other uh, leftovers, they can, don't have to throw them away. No. They can still use the, them. The other way is if you really want to keep them, if, you, if you're a pleasure angler and you want sure. to keep them, your oil and salt, put pilchard oil on them. I remember that. And then salt, and then they'll preserve well, and when you go to use them, they're good. They're not quite as effective as uh, fresh. But they can be on the day when there's dabs there. They love dabs, these dabs. They love old lug. Yes, you know, I remember stinks, dabs. You might think it's no good even, but it's marvellous stuff, you know. And you'll, you'll catch three dabs at a time. And sometimes there's a guy next to you, he's got fresh lug and he's not catching. Oh, you know? yeah. Yeah, the last thing is, Graham, is your bait. It's got your name on it. Oh, that's you'll get it in the water and catch some fish. What you mean? Well, Tony, listen, I appreciate all that information. There's uh, plenty there. Guys can always uh, watch this twice because there's more information I can ever take in. Well, it's been and, a pleasure, Graham. And a lot Brilliant. of tips, a lot of tips here as well, Tony. So I appreciate yeah. your help. Long time. You mentioned about 40 years ago, and I think that was when I was coming down here. Yeah. And in my car, I've got the anchor lamp that I bought off you, and it has to be 30 years old. <laughs> and it's just, just working. Just so, right. See, that's another thing. Just, just before we go... All the lamps now are gone. Really? You get this is a just quickly, just the last thing. You get these headlights, and they're absolutely marvellous. I don't think it's good shining into the camera. No, I'll pick them up. Yeah. Basically, I can't see a thing now. They're very, very still. cheap. They're so light. Yeah. Oh, they are light. Yeah. And, and now they're so bright. Some of these headlights we do. Yeah. This That's is another one. And they're quite reasonable, about fifty pounds. Yeah. And they're so bright that you don't need a headlock, you don't need a, a lamp anymore. Oh, thank so you very much. So if you see a match angler <laughs> down there now, you'll see them down there in a match. Yeah. And everyone's got one of these headlights. No and lamps anymore. About fifty pounds. No paraffin. No mess. No. No broken mantles. No hassle. <laughs> I think I've got one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All right, Tony. I'm going to give it a crack okay. anyway. That's brilliant, Graham. Thanks very much. Okay. Hope you catch some fish. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Cheers. I just had a nice whiting. I had three quarters of a pound. I'm following a nice whiting, I get this. Disgusting creature. Is that a fish, an aeroplane, or something related to ET? Like a Miller's thumb or bullhead or a sea scorpion. I mean, he's had a good go at that. Look at that, you wouldn't want to meet that late on the night, would you? All that all that distance casting and Everything we've been talking about in that wonderful tackle. 
and he's taken a double black mugworm on about a full row. Let's get him off the hook. And there he is. Come on, chappy, back you go. The most ugly fish known to totally awesome, but it is a fish. One white in, one bull head. Back we go. Well, there we go, guys, this time. It's a double shot of gargantuan monsters. A DD. A dinky dab. An RR. A rotten rocklin. Wow. Well, they're fish, aren't they? So they bullhead, rockling, dabs, whiting. And this one's on Tony's rig, so they're working. I'm still hopeful there's more fish out there. <laughs> Thank you.